Hello everyone, this is Angie Juzang with Legacy Talks. We have not had one of these in a while and I'm so glad that we have um, some guests today here that's gonna tell us about a, a play and a mission really that they're on to um, educate us and to be to be more culturally sensitive, to be more open to um, one another and our backgrounds and our experiences. And instead of trying to really outline what um, it is, I'm going to leave it up to Miss Marcy Duncan and Carrie Sindel. Um, welcome. Thank you Thank for you. Um, being with Thank us. You. Um, Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Marcy. Marcy, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us why we're, why we're even talking today. All right, great. Thank you so much for having us. We are so happy to, to be a part of the conversation. We always look for opportunities to be a part of a conversation. Uh, my name is Marcy Duncan, and um, I'm an actor and playwright. I also teach acting at the University of West Florida, and I go around the country doing odd things like performance. So right now, I am on tour with um, my beloved play. Um, Carrie and I co-wrote this piece together, um, and it was born from a sense of curiosity, right? We were in the time of George Floyd, and... It was a lot of civil unrest happening and it was very unstable. It was very unstable. It felt very unstable. We didn't know what was happening. We didn't know what was happening. Um, and so one of my things that I do when, I, when I'm feeling this way, you know, of course I talk to my girlfriends, I talk to my friends, but I also find ways to be creative. So I was doing a show in Destin, Florida and Carrie um, came to see the show. And after the show, she asked me if she could talk to me. And um, I was like, yeah, sure. So she pulled me over to the side and she said, you know, I've been thinking about you and I've been thinking about your son. You know, we have sons of the same age. And I've been thinking about the things that you're telling your son versus the things I'm telling my son. And I want to have a conversation with you about it. And also, I think we should write a play. And that was so striking to me. It was mm -hmm. so striking to me. It all, it brings chills to me every time I think about it, quite honestly, because I had never had a white woman so directly come to me in a spirit of love and curiosity and ask me, how you doing? Let's talk about the elephant in the room. And so needless to say, I went home immediately after that and I just was fired up and I started writing I started writing uh, in my little iPhone, honey. My husband was asleep on the side and I was just, I was just going because I didn't, I didn't know I had all of these things to say. I mean, I think them, I talk about them to my girlfriends, you know, of color, but I didn't know I had all these things to say upon that question. And so that's just, that's kind of how this thing got going. And we spent time together writing. Um, it was on Zoom and because our world was separated at that time because of COVID. And um, we met on Zoom and we talked. We had the real conversation. We asked each other questions, but we also set up very clear guidelines. We didn't know that at the time, but you know, hindsight is 2020. Mm -hmm. We set up very clear boundaries. We said, hey, one thing we know is that we love each other. And this is out of love. So I know that I'm going to say some things that may hurt your feelings. And I know that you may say some things that may hurt my feelings, but that's not our intention. Our intention is to come together and understand one another. And we want to make sure we remember that we love one another. And that's how we started. And that's how we had the courage to keep going, even when uh, it was difficult to do so. That is wonderful. Thank you for that background. Carrie, tell me a little bit about yourself and and, and please integrate uh, what moved you to approach Marcy that day. Sure. Um, I'm Carrie Sandell. I'm also an actor and writer. Um, met Marcy at the University of West Florida. She, I actually was a student from one of her classes and I work here at the university. And um, so, you know, going back to that time, um, my intent was just to truly understand and Marcy was on my heart a lot. She had a 19, 20 year old son at the time. I had a 19, 20 year old son. And so, you know, when we were in the midst of all this 
civil unrest and turmoil and after after George Floyd's murder and everything that was going on that we all experienced. And I think in technicolor, because the world was also in the process of being locked down. So, you know, mm -hmm. we had a front row view to just everything that was going on. Um, you know, I, I my intent was not, hey, let's do something. Let's create something amazing or, you know, um, I what I did see was a lot of people on social media slapping a Facebook filter, you know, mm -hmm. and that was the extent of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was super vapid and didn't really engage in a conversation and didn't really do anything. So I just wanted to to talk to her, see if she was doing OK, understand, you know, when I'm telling my son when he's going back to to the university in central Florida, you know, it's be safe, pay attention, don't text and drive, don't speed. Um, those are my conversations. And I know Marcy was having different conversations with her son when he was getting back on the freeway. Um, so things like that. It was a mama to mama, woman to woman, yes, heart desire mm -hmm. um, to have the conversation. And, you know, because we're theater artists and we're creatives, that is how we process is let's let's talk about it and let's let's write. Let's do something. Uh, we didn't know it would turn into this amazing play dissonance that, you know, from from its start a year and a half ago, premiering at FAMU and then going across the Panhandle of Florida, down into Central Florida, two weeks in D.C., Bronx in New York. Um, you know, it's been so beautifully received because it does ask the question that doesn't get asked. You know, can we can I survive our friendship? And and the premise of play is these women have been friends for 20 years, close friends for 20 years and avoided conversations about race. So can a white woman and a black woman have a candid conversation about race and the friendship survive? So throughout the, the process of the play, you see these women who love each other, who are friends, who are who are going into business together and have very eloquently avoided these difficult conversations throughout their relationship. And you see where they're where they divert and change the subject. But they mm -hmm. come to a point where where they need to discuss it as they're they're starting this business together. Um, and so the the play you see them having these difficult conversations. And the reception, whether it's been up in, in the Northeast or in the South, has has been equally beautiful people have received it from lots of different demographics and areas the same way because the play is born in a desire for unity you it's know right. and we're having we're having that conversation in in that desire we don't have an agenda of i want to win or or um you know just any agenda at all right. that can sometimes taint these conversations you know the the agenda is i want to see you and understand where you're coming from. You want to see want me to and understand see where I'm coming from. I want to see you. That is, that's so important what you just said, because um, I think one of the most profound um, interactions that I had was with um, a coworker of mine who was white um, and she called me crying and she said, Hey, can you meet me? And I said, sure. Um, and she had seen this meme of um, uh, basically, essentially the, the, the crux of it was that, she had um, raised two women to not see color. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she, she would, she, she thought that she was doing the right thing by mm -hmm. telling them not to treat anybody differently. And she said, did I miss the boat? Did I misunderstand? Because the, the meme was, it's not that we want you to see us as the same. We want you to see our differences and embrace us. Mm -hmm. and understand our background and accept me for who I am and all of the intricacies and differences that that I have that my culture brings that my you know my my different experiences bring and mm -hmm. I said certainly not you know if anything you have an opportunity with your grandchildren but even the, the fact that she was enlightened um was important and and so why dissidence why that name well, a lot of people um, ask that question and, you know, with entertainment, you want something that's going to grab somebody's attention, right? Um, but actually the title is a musical term as well. And the dissonant chord, which is used in um, jazz 
right? They're not chords or notes that normally fit together in perfect harmony, but they still are a beautiful creative expression of music and one that is historic and one that is beloved and one that is credited to, you know, the African-American culture. So it, it, in its face value, dissonance means, you know, that we're not quite seeing eye to eye, but it's also a beautiful musical term that just because you're different, sums up what you just said, doesn't mean we can't coexist in a beautiful mm -hmm. creation of harmony, of unity. So that's where the name uh, of the play comes from. And you know, what? it's it's okay. interesting um, because we, we like to say, you know, dissonance is not like a prescription of how to have a racial conversation. You know, it's not follow these steps and you can have a success, successful racial conversation, but what it does is models in relationship with one another one way that it can be done. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it doesn't always work out, but it is a, a beautiful way to show, you know, we can have these conversations, but like you were saying, the crux of it is the willingness to see mm -hmm. and the willingness to be seen. Mm -hmm. And starting at that point, then progress is made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want people to walk away with after hope. seeing this play hope 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 because everywhere you look the picture is painted that it's impossible for people of different races to come together and coexist and respect one another and live in peace and harmony and i can understand that i mean look at what is happening in the world look at all of the things that we're facing but i believe that as, as Martin, I'm down here doing a show about Martin Luther King, so I'm hearing his words all the time. I believe that love is the most ra radical weapon that we have. It's the most underused, powerful, radical weapon that we have. And if we can uh, get people to really start to look at love as an action to come together, I think we can change the world. And we really believe that. We really believe that. And we believe that there's an opportunity for more people to, to see this message and to understand it and to get it. And I also believe that there are more people in this world who want unity than people who don't. Mm -hmm. Of course, in the media and television and radio, we are always inundated with those who are, have no interest in it. So it sounds like the majority, but that is just not it. That is just not the case. Us taking this play here, there, everywhere, backwoods, all kind of places, and seeing the people come out and seeing those people hungry for a solution, for an answer, for, for another way, it is amazing. And so I think our mission is that of hope, you know, to spread the message that love is a powerful weapon. Fantastic. With that in mind, um, I think there were a lot of people that wanted to be woke, right? Right after um, uh, George Floyd's uh, murder and, and, and the kind of the palpable energy that came from what was happening in the media. It was, it was, it seeped into our workplace, into our social settings. You know, do you talk about, it, do you not talk about it? You know, so I, I mentioned to you that um, the co-founder set up listening sessions here and created an environment to where we were what you know we were teaching or trying hopefully teaching the you know the the background of, of racism um there was an uptick of you know diversity and inclusion uh directors who were integrated into corporate worlds people you know sought out um counseling and such but i heard a statistic recently that of the 85 percent that did that 45 percent have discontinued it and then now mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a deaf ear people are like oh that was then or, you know, I've deemed myself not to be anti-racist after the uptick of that consciousness. And so now I don't even have to pay attention anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, are you finding that people are turning away um, a little bit more than what they would have to embrace this messaging two years ago? I don't find that. Um, I do know that it is getting harder to get the message through the door. I do know that because especially in the state of Florida with all of the hoops that we have to, to jump through with um, um, 
the seemingly attack on diversity efforts in the state of Florida. I'm going to just say it like that. Um, so it is getting harder to link with uh, university systems because they have to try to figure out ways to frame the work that they're trying to do. So I would say the resistance to uh, actual work is present. And I think I think it is more present. Mm -hmm. uh, but actual reaction to the work, the actual experience of the work has not changed at all, which is interesting yeah. because the appetite is still there. It's just, we have to go through so many more, um, so much more red tape in order to get the work in front of people, which is disappointing. It is disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's more of a, a bureaucratic mm -hmm. issue that, because we, like I said, you know, I mean, it was interesting when we were in New York or we were in DC, one of the questions we would get and our talk back was, how is this received in the South? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, as, as a, as Marcy and I are both Florida born Southerners, mm -hmm. um, it was great to say it's been very well received in the South and mm -hmm. it's been very well received in areas that were a little more rural and predominantly white. So, so there is going back to that, you know, we want people to leave with hope because we're seeing that that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Um, so the reception to the play has been beautiful. The struggle is getting people to see it. Yep. You know, getting, too, getting in the door. The, I'm sorry, Carrie. I think one of the things too is, um, you know, these two characters, they say the things that a lot of people want to say, right? So when they are sitting in the audience and they are hearing these words, they see themselves. Because not only do I say what I want to say, Carrie says what she wants to say, and I should say our character names, Lauren says what she wants to say, and Angela says what she wants to say. And these conversations, the dialogue in the play was not grabbed out of the out of the sky. They came from real dialogue, right? That Carrie and I had, that I've had in my life over time, trying to figure out this conundrum of, of black and white women relationships. And, and why there was so mis so much mistrust there, right? Me trying to figure that out in my own life, right? So this dialogue comes from a very organic place and people can see themselves in that, right? You know, they may never have said it, but they sure have thought it, right? Mm -hmm. And the other part about it is too, is that you are rooting for these women, you are rooting from both of them. You want both of them to see each other because nobody wins here. There's no villain here. There's no, no, um, let's sock it to the white man. Yeah. Let's paint a picture of the angry black woman. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not doing that, but we are addressing those issues head on, right? We're mm -hmm. saying the things that we, we want to say because it's couched in love and we know that we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. So I how how free are yeah. you? You had to fight to get there in the play because yeah. Angela didn't always know that that was a safe space. She didn't know, which is yeah. why she was dancing around the subject, this whole relationship. Mm -hmm. And so once we get to that place in the play where they both agree, we ain't going nowhere. I love we it. We this out. And I people love it. I love us. it. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, obviously some things that you've already talked about have resonated with me, um, particularly I have I have a 29 year old. And so uh, several years ago, I was asked to speak at Leadership Gulf Coast, which is a program under the Coast Chamber. Um, and it was called Diversity Day at the time. And that seemed seemed to actually split people instead of a perception. So anyway, we, we renamed it Culture and Her Heritage Day. Um, but I had the opportunity to speak at, from the African American's perspective and and talk about um, the fact that I do have to teach my child do not wear big overcoats um, when you go into a retail location. Walk down the middle of the aisle so they can see you first. Keep your hands out of your 
pockets. If you get stopped, keep your hands on the um, steering wheel. If not, put it outside the door. Be very respectful. Uh, can I ask them first? Can I reach into my glove de department um, to get my you know license or registration um, before doing any you know moves? And so when I had white women come back to me and say, I've never thought about that. I've yeah. never had to tell my child that. So the the fact that y'all started off with that story and I've had that personally happen to me is is just incredible. But the, also what I can't wait to see with the play is how you go about navigating the conversation without having to take care of the white woman, you know, um, uh, and Lauren, you know, and I'm sorry, but you know, no, usually it's, it's in the turn, play. Like, it's all good. I, it's yeah, a draft. Like all, it is a draft. Victim, you know, that, you know, we, we've been living this and then because you have this consciousness and, you know, mm -hmm. then we have to, you know, I, I don't know if y'all watched the, I'm, I'm going on a tangent now and then, uh, <laughs> but, but um, the Bell Collective, I've just now gotten into that reality show. And there was a situation where, you know, a white woman was in um, a brunch setting and they were talking about white folks in general and history. And she was like, we don't do that. And my people don't do that. But yet she was a great, great, great granddaughter of Jefferson Davis, you know. And mm -hmm. then so they're they're around her embracing her. It's OK. You're OK. We're OK. And then the social media blew up like, wait a minute. You know, mm -hmm. she was in your environment, taught, you know, invited in to listen to what you had to say. And then you ended up having to, you know, Whole monologue about that. Okay, so I'm ready for that. So let tell us about the details. It is it is Saturday at um, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. It's at the Theater in the Round, um, which is in the um, the the Harrison County campus. Um, there is a a a, a, a show time at three and at seven. Um, and I this this video is going to be attached to an event that'll have the link to to buy the tickets. Um, and I hope that we continue to build a relationship with one another and that we are able to get this um, this very important messaging out uh, because we, we do want to continue to um, to grow. Is yeah. there anything that you want to leave us with in the last minute? Um, well, the, we, there's two performances of the show Saturday. There's a three o'clock and a seven o'clock. The three o'clock show afterwards, we have a talk back, which mm -hmm. is a a, a to us, a very integral and important part of the play because it gives you a chance to digest mm -hmm. what you've just seen and to to talk through some of that. So we we so when very you say much talk back. What do you what do you mean? What what do you mean? Just that 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 we open it up to the audience and you just start talk literally talk back. We do. We talk about we talk about the process. We talk about some of the origin of the play. They can ask specific questions about the play. Um, and and so we it gives people an opportunity to kind of digest what they've just seen um, and they can ask about the creative process and things like that. Yeah, and our director usually uh, moderates that conversation. It's, it's not a race conversation because we're not sure that we have all the components that we need in the room for that kind of a thing. So <laughs> he, makes sure, he makes sure that he crafts the conversation so that we are uh, talking about the elements that are necessary to have a conversation with someone who is not of your same race. And uh, the way he frames it is, is quite genius and, and we get some good conversation out of it. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you so much. I, I do appreciate you um, for even bringing this to our community and I hope that we um, will be able to, to see you again. Yes. Um, and I'm gonna do what I can to help promote it between now and then. <laughs> well, I appreciate, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.